Welcome to a, another session of Understanding Human Anatomy. We're going to continue our discussion of the thorax and concentrate on the respiratory system with the lungs, the bronchial tree, and the pleura. And in this first video, I want to talk mainly about the pleura. The pleura are two sacs, one on each side, that surround and invest the lung. So there's a right pleura and a left pleura for the right lung and the left lung. The pleura is a serous sac. All serous sacs have one thing in common in that they are formed primarily of a simple squamous epithelium lining the inside of the sac. And the cavity of the sac, in this case it would be the pleural cavity, has just a small amount of fluid. Now the pleura is one of three of the serous sacs we find in the body. The other ones being the pericardium and the peritoneum. How these serous sacs form and their relations to the organ that they invest is somewhat difficult conceptually. So I'm going to start by doing a very simple diagram to show you what actually happens between the lung and the pleura. And what I talk about here could be used to talk about the pericardium and with some modification, the peritoneum. Now, this next diagram is going to be highly schematic. I'm not making any attempt to make things look as they actually do. Uh, I just want you to see the concept. So, I'm going to represent the lung as just a circle. and I'll fill that in so it's a little bit more visible. And I'm going to represent the pleura initially as just a sac. So This is the pleura. In green, the pleural cavity. is here and we'll draw a line into the cavity and then the lung is this blue blob. <coughs> 
that's the starting point. What happens is the lung moves into the pleura. So moving towards the middle of the page, let me again draw our blob-like lung. And now it started to push in towards the pleura. So what we're going to do is see the pleura look like this. So we got pleura away from the lung and pleura right smack dab on the lung. I couldn't draw it as well as I should, but it really hugs the lung. And the pleural cavity is still this space over here. So let me label again the pleural cavity. And we'll draw a line. So in other words the pleural cavity is the space between the walls of the pleura. As this process continues, we'll move over to the right and I'll draw our schematic lung. Again, and color it. Now, if we look at the pleura, after it's completely formed, it will look like this. We have a layer of the pleura applied to the surface of the lung and then a line, a wall of the pleura away from the surface of the lung like so. So we call the wall of the pleural ca cavity, the wall of the pleura, away from the lung, the parietal pleura. And the parietal pleura is found against the chest wall, against the thoracic wall, and I showed that in a previous video, it right, bound, right up next to the endothoracic fascia. It also would be up against the diaphragm inferiorly, and the most medial part of the parietal pleura is up against the mediastinum, which is the area in the middle of the chest. Then we have visceral pleura, 
and the visceral pleura is the wall that is applied to the outer surface of the lung. And it is tightly applied to the surface of the lung, almost as if it was part of the lung. And then we have the pleural cavity, which is the space between the visceral and parietal pleura. And again, this is a schematic diagram, so I've made this space huge. In reality, it's, it's very small, except in some specific areas, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. The pleural cavity is filled with a small amount of fluid and that fluid essentially lubricates the movement between the lungs and the body wall. It acts a little bit like a bursa that we talked about previously. So parietal pleura against the body wall, the diaphragm, or the mediastinum, the visceral pleura closely applied to the lung, and then the pleural cavity is the space in between. Now let's look at a more realistic diagram of the pleura. I'm still going to exaggerate the spaces. But so you see how it looks in the body. Now we'll start this diagram with the lungs already drawn in. And again, I'm not Frank Netter. I'm just trying to give you a general representation of the lungs. I will tell you that I've expanded the space in the middle. It's unrealistically large. Um, but that gives me room to do the drawings that I need to do. Um, and we'll add some things to this drawing. And the first thing I want to add is the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is skeletal muscle that separates the thorax from the abdomen. So it's a muscular wall. It is made up of skeletal muscle. The diaphragm is a domed muscle that bulges into the thorax. It's actually two domes, a left and a right, with a little decline in the middle, like so. Now, I've left extra space between the lungs and the diaphragm, so I have room to sketch in the pleura. Now that I have the diaphragm in place, I want to sketch in the body wall and I'm not going to get fancy, I'm just using a black line to indicate the body wall. Over here on the other side let me sketch it in like so and I'm just using a black line to represent the body wall. And I'll touch this up just a little bit here. So we have the two lungs the diaphragm and the body wall and not going into real detail on any of them. The pleura uh, 
there is visceral pleura that clings to the surface of each lung. So I'm drawing that in on the left lung right now. This is the visceral pleura of the left lung. draw in the visceral pleura of the right lung. Like so. Then we need the parietal pleura. So the parietal pleura is up here and it adheres to the body wall and goes all the way down here and then back up over the diaphragm and up here and on the right side, we'll start and again against the body wall, like so. And it is right smack up against the body wall and the diaphragm but it's not bound tightly remember we have the endothoracic fascia between the parietal pleura and the body wall so it, the pleura can be separated from the body wall so let me put in some labels Okay. Parietal pleura. And the parietal pleura can be Costal against the body wall, diaphragmatic, on the diaphragm, and mediastinal. in the midline. So if we look at the costal pleura, it would be here against the body wall. The diaphragmatic pleura is the pleura down here on the diaphragm itself. And the mediastinal pleura is the pleura in the midline. And then we have the visceral pleura And the visceral pleura uh, 
is the pleura that's closely attached to the surface of the lung. And then we have the pleural cavity And the pleural cavity is the space between the visceral and parietal pleura. Notice that the lungs are not within the pleural cavity. The only thing in the pleural cavity is a little bit of fluid. And again, I've greatly exaggerated the size of the cavity. In reality, the parietal pleura and visceral pleura would be right up next to one another. Now, there are areas known as pleural recesses. And these are areas where you have parietal pleura up against parietal pleura. So, if we look down here, If we look down in each of these diagrams, there's a space down here between the body wall and the diaphragm on each side where you have parietal pleura opposite parietal pleura. The lungs don't get down in this area. Now, when the lungs expand during inspiration, they will get further down in this area, but there's always a part of it that they never get to. This is a recess, and this recess is known as the costal diaphragmatic recess. And I'm going to put it, I'm putting a label down here in the abdomen, in the abdominal cavity. And I'll then draw lines into the right and left costal diaphragmatic recess. This recess is important because if someone gets fluid build up in the pleural cavity, something known as pleurisy, The fluid built up in the pleural cavity will collect down in the costal diaphragmatic recess. And sometimes this area needs to be tapped to drain that fluid and to help make a diagnosis. Now, there is an anterior recess on both sides. And so I put the label in the middle here. Actually, the label is within the mediastinum. And I'm going to draw arrows to each of the anterior recesses. <coughs> 
On the right side, the anterior recess is very small and, and really negligible. On the left side, in the area that we have the cardiac notch, there is a larger area of recess. And just pointing this out because for example, a projectile, a bullet, an arrow, a piece of, of metal, could pierce the chest wall and go through the anterior recess on the left side and not touch the lung at all. There is one more area of pleural recess, and it's at the superior end of the pleura. And this is called the cupola. And I'll draw an arrow to the cupola on the left side. It would be in the analogous part area on the right side. The cupola is an area of pleura sitting superior to the superior pole of the lung. And one of the things that you need to understand is that the cupola actually extends up beyond the thoracic inlet. And it sometimes can be pierced if you have a penetrating injury in the base of the neck. And even though it doesn't get down here to the, the lungs itself, it can cause an entry of air into the pleural cavity, and that's something known as a pneumothorax. And we'll talk about that in another time. Then the area in the middle here, between the two parietal pleura, is the mediastinum. And it is, in fact, defined, the mediastinum is defined as the area between the two parietal pleura. There are lots of important structures we find in the mediastinum. The heart is in the mediastinum, as is the trachea and the esophagus and part of the aorta. So, mediastinum, area between two parietal pleura. That concludes our discussion of the pleura and the pleural recesses. In the next video, we'll talk about the bronchial tree and the lungs. Thank you for your attention.